rodents. Just the word gives me the heebie-jeebies. How about you? They are so frustrating in the garden and so destructive. Depending on if it's rats, mice, or squirrels, it's not good news when you have them. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to keep them out of your garden and how to get rid of them once you have them. Coming up. Hey, I'm Brian with California Garden TV, and if you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help you grow your best garden ever and keep it safe, then you're in the right place. Get started now by hitting subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss anything. Now let's get protecting. So yeah, we're gonna be talking about rats and squirrels today. They are the two that I get asked about the most. I'm gonna start with rats because they are my number one garden nemesis. Now in my tomato video last year, I mentioned that rats were a big problem for me and that I uh, killed them. And I got a few comments from people who called me heartless for doing that. And if you're already going to leave a comment down below about that, I mean, go ahead. But I'm not going to li listen to it. You're not going to change my mind. And I'm not going to feel bad. Yes, I feel bad for having to kill anything living, even tomato hornworms. Which, by the way, somebody else condemned me for actually killing tomato worms. Anyway, you can't please everybody. Now my problem with rats isn't just that they take the tomatoes and eat them before I can. Um, I do have a problem though that they're very inconsiderate. They take little nibbles out of all of the fruit instead of just eating one whole one and leaving me some. So yeah, I have a problem with that. But my biggest problem is the fact that they carry fleas, first of all, which carry Lyme disease, dangerous. But their urine and their droppings can carry many dangerous diseases, including, but not limited to, hantavirus, leptospirosis, plague, and salmonella. It's nothing to mess around with. The bacteria, if they're sitting under your tomato plants or any plant and are pooping and peeing, and then you water with a hose and it splashes from that up to your fruit and you eat the fruit, that can be dangerous. Another reason to water from below, by the way, with like a drip system or something. So no, I'm not going to just live and let live because I care about my family more than I care about rats and their families. Now, there are ways to discourage them from coming onto your property. Keep it tidy. If you have wood piles, junk piles, tall grass and weeds, get rid of all that. Tidy it up because you're providing shelter for them. That's one of their necessities other than the food. Now that being said, I did get a lot of comments from you guys on that video, hundreds of comments about ways that you've heard of or you've tried to get rid of rats. Uh, some of them very comical and some of them very ingenious sounding. I think the most popular method was, or solution was telling me to get a cat. Um, I'm allergic to cats and we have neighborhood cats. I mean, I see them all the time. Uh, but obviously they're not 100% good at controlling rats. Then there's dogs. Uh, we have Boomer, but ultimately he's not out at night and he would rather sit and watch a rat if he was out from the comfort of a chair rather than chasing and killing it. But I'm not heartless. In fact, I told several of you who recommended poisons that I don't do that. First of all, it causes the animal to suffer while they're dying. Second of all, there is a risk of secondary poisoning by a pet that goes in and eats the rat or chews on the rat, by owls, by any kind of bird that, or any kind of animal that would uh, mess with that rat once it's been killed and poisoned. But ultimately, it's a very inhumane way to kill the rat. Now, that aside, when a rat gets poisoned, it becomes very sick. And when rats or any animal gets sick, they seek shelter. And if they unfortunately seek shelter in your attic, your house, your garage, or somewhere in your outdoor living area, you're going to be searching for a stinky mess for a while. And who wants to do it, any of that, especially if it's in the house? So other than poison, I did get some more uh, suggestions. Air rifle and target practice, which... I don't really want to sit out all night, you know, watching the fence with night vision goggles, and I definitely wouldn't have good aim in the dark. 
You can enlist uh, the local owl population by installing a barn owl box somewhere on your property, kind of high, and they can possibly help maintain the problem. I haven't tried one of those myself. There are various contraptions that you can make or buy. Uh, a rat zapper, which is like a box that's covered in metal on the inside. And when the rat goes in, it gets electrocuted. I tried that. I didn't have any takers. There are plug-in things that emit a, a little, really high-pitched noise that rats can hear. Apparently, we can't. Uh, I tried that too. Didn't work. And then there's the bucket full of water that has a trap door on top uh, where the rats fall in and drown. Uh, I tried that with limited success, but then you have a bunch of rat water you have to get rid of. So time and time again, I went back to the old standby, the basic snap trap. And it works. The only problem with those is having to pry the dead rat out of the trap once he's caught, especially if it got messy. And sometimes the rat wasn't dead, which is a whole other bit of trauma. So while it was the best, me best method, it still had some drawbacks. Until a few years ago, when I actually found out someone did invent a better mousetrap. This is it right here. And I'm gonna link this product down below um, because I love it. I absolutely love it. Not only is it super strong, like it's an instant kill, there's no suffering there. Uh, also, you can, when the rat is caught in here, I do have rat gloves, by the way, big rubber gloves that I wear and any type of when putting the traps out or anything. But basically what happens I need a rat, hang on. You have no idea what I'm gonna pull up right now, right? Okay, it's just a sock. So the rat comes in. Strong, really strong. But the best part about this is you just hold it over the trash can and pinch this. That's it. Easy, easy cleanup. So this is the best method by far. Um, however, if you disagree, if you have your own method that has worked for you that you have experience with, then definitely leave that in the comments below. I think we would all love to hear about it. Now, one thing about this that you might have a concern about um, is the possibility of trapping squirrels or birds or pets noses, uh, children's fingers. I haven't had any of those things happen to me. But if you have that concern, what you can do is take a shoe box and cut a rat size hole in one end and put this inside the shoe box. Um, that way birds aren't going to go in there. Most likely squirrels probably won't. Um, and pets won't be able to do it either. Maybe put a, a brick or something on top just so it doesn't blow open. Um, now squirrels, I haven't used the, the, the shoe box method. Squirrels have never really gone after this ever that I know of. Um, but if that's a concern and you don't want to do the shoebox thing, just put these out at dusk and bring them in in the morning and squirrels will be asleep during that time. So this is the only method that I found works consistently that doesn't produce a bunch of other issues and trauma on me. So I will leave this down below. All right, so let's move on to squirrels. Now squirrels, I think, according to the comments, are maybe a bigger problem for most of you than rats. For me, that's not the case. Although, uh, I know a lot of you have commented on multiple videos that have had squirrels running back and forth on the fence, jumping in the trees while you've been watching the video. However, knock on wood, but apparently I'm very lucky because I've never, that I know of, had any kind of squirrel damage to my fruits or vegetables. Um, but a lot of you do, unless you're thinking it's squirrels and maybe it's rats. But if you've witnessed squirrels in your garden, I'm not gonna argue with you, I know it happens. Now there's a few ways that you can uh, use, the things you can do to keep them out of the garden. Number one, as gross as it sounds, Amazon carries wolf and coyote urine, predators to squirrels. They smell that urine, they're gonna steer clear. That is a way that I know I've heard from a lot of people that works really well. Um, another thing is a pepper spray, homemade pepper spray. 
that uh, I've used successfully on my banana trees. When my bananas start putting out new leaves in the spring, the squirrels hop up there and nibble them off as fast as they can come out. And I've actually lost a few banana trees because they can't photosynthesize because the squirrels eating off the leaves as fast as they're produced. So I've used it on those and it's worked. Um, another thing you can do, and I'll leave the recipe, did I say that already? I'll leave the recipe for that squirrel, uh, for the pepper spray down below. Another thing you can do is to give them what they want. Give them food and give them water. A lot of times when they're eating your tomatoes, just like birds, they're looking for moisture. They're looking to quench their thirst. And that's why they're chewing on the juicy tomato. So if you have a water source nearby, like a tray of water, a bird bath, uh, maybe that's why I don't have any issues because I have two ponds full of water so they don't, they don't go thirsty. Uh, so you could try that. You could put out some sunflower seeds or peanuts maybe on the other side of your yard to draw them over there and fill them up on that. So those are a couple of ways that you can try to do it. You can also catch them in traps and release them somewhere else, although that just creates a problem for someone else. So let them find their way somewhere else normally, so at least naturally, so you're not the cause of it at least. So I hope you don't have to deal with any rodents or socks in your garden. Uh, if you do, I hope these tips helped you or you can try them out. If you try them out and they work for you, please let me know. And again, if you have any other methods that you use successfully, let us know that down in the comments as well. And uh, I will see you guys on Friday.